Oi oi, all right, all right, how's it going? I'm Grant, you're you, this is Do The Review. If you've been about for a bit, or if you've been with us for a bit, you know how it goes on Sundays. We open the jazz club to talk about new albums in that wide and varied genre. Uh, if you think you love jazz, but don't really know where to start, I aim for these episodes to be a place to get some recommendations to help you kind of find the style that you like because as a genre there are just so many variations held within jazz that it can be quite intimidating i'm not an expert by any stretch i'm also in that same boat i know i enjoy the genre but having never studied it and not really grown up with it i feel like i'm a bit of an outside observer slowly finding my way so today um, in lieu of any kind of new jazz releases i thought i'd look back at three records from some legends in the genre let's get into it the first album on the menu today is Wayne Shorter's Night Dreams. Shorter passed away almost a year ago to the day, March 2nd, 2023. He was a legendary saxophonist and someone whose back catalogue I'd always intended to jump into, but sadly, as is often the case, it was his passing that actually pushed me to start. Night Dreamer was Shorter's fourth solo album of originals, his first for legendary jazz record label Blue Note Records, and on this record he's backed by some incredible talent. This is always one of the most exciting parts of listening to jazz, especially old school stuff in the genre because you find so many more great albums just by following the family tree of players that come off each album. Here we have Lee Morgan on trumpet, Reggie Workman on bass and Elvin Jones on drums. Shorter is of course the leader and central component of these pieces, but on first listen it was McCoy Tyner's piano that really caught my attention. His playing just flows effortlessly around Shorter's sax, creating a soft pillowy bed for his innovation. Shorter was inspired by the concept of Judgment Day for Night Dreamer, and while that sounds dark, according to interviews around the time, in his mind, Shorter actually saw Armageddon as a period of total enlightenment, which we will discover where we will discover what we are and why we're here. And having that context just adds another layer to what is already an amazing record from a golden age in the history of jazz. If anyone is interested in getting into Wayne Shorter, this is a fantastic place to start. I'd give this one a 9.2. So naturally, as it was his playing that caught my attention on Night Dreamer, I had to give a listen to McCoy Tyner. Uh, and doing some research, I'd heard that the real McCoy was his banger, or at least one of them. As I said, though Wayne Shorter's arrangements and sax were undoubtedly stellar, uh, and the driving force of Night Dreamer, Tyner's capabilities on the piano really came a close second. Once again, just like Night Dreamer, the combinations of players are incredible on this album. Tyner is joined here by the fantastic Elvin Jones on drums, who makes his presence felt uh, even on the first track, Passion Dance, with a great drum solo before the end of the piece. Tyner and Jones have great chemistry throughout the album. Uh, it's often hard to separate the rhythm of Tyner's hands from Jones's ride cymbal. And one thing that really sort of stands out in this era of jazz is how much space the players and band leaders kind of give each other. Contemplation is a great example of Tyner sitting in the back of the band here and just letting Joe Henderson do the work on sax and steer the piece. Of course, Tyner has his moments, and when it comes, he does not waste the opportunity to jump from well-placed chord stabs just to upper register runs, with the results just being a delight to listen to. Uh, this is an 8.3. So if we're talking about jazz greats, it would be downright rude not to include the absolute goat that is Miles Davis. And here I wanted to sample uh, some of the early work of Davis's catalogue and Blue Moods is the second album by the man who would become a legend. This early on in his career, the music is less about pushing boundaries and more so playing to the style of the day, which in 1955 was all about cool jazz. Even so, it's a fantastic album and actually pretty innovative as a release. It's a short record because they cut the master with less grooves in the disc to allow more room for the bass frequencies of Charles Mingus, another legend that I'll just need to get to at some point. Uh, that low end element shines through immediately on Open and Nature Boy with Mingus's double bass keeping the listener centered in this slow atmospheric piece while still finding room for smooth fills as the track opens up. Alone Together is a piece where actually the foundational groove I think is a bit plodding and awkward initially but I feel it's one where Davis ultimately really gets to shine, uh, taking the listener on a journey with each passing passage. 
Teddy Charles provides the vibraphone on this album and it's this particular element I find really charming. It just sets the scene and gives you a real sense of place in time, characterising the cool jazz scene of that 50s era. Davis's later career captures a lot of praise but it seems like we really shouldn't sleep on this era either. This is a 7.9. But time to me for me to knock it on the head. What do you think? What about you? Have you heard any of these before? Uh, what's your favourite? Give me some recommendations of others by those artists if you do know them. And if you don't, hopefully go away, check them out, come back and drop me a message in the comments. Let me know what you think. See you back here next week for more Sunday Jazz Club. Or, you know, if you're watching this in the future, just check the description or check the channel. It might already be linked down there. All right. Cheers, mate. Bye.